It is important we help prevent peer-on-peer -peer violence to stop children and young people harming each other. When children and young people were asked what they thought could help prevent peer-on-peer -peer violence, they said it is important that adults talk to them about violence, to raise awareness that it happens, and to talk about different forms of peer-on-peer -peer violence. Children and young people think nothing should be a taboo subject. So, for example, they understand it might be difficult for adults to talk to them about sexual development or sexual violence, but nevertheless it is really important to have these discussions. One young person said, It's important to make sure violence isn't a topic that just gets passed over. It's the same thing with sexual issues. We've never been prepared for that, you know, and we really should have been. Another said, Children don't report what is happening to them because they don't know if they're dealing with real violence or not. Maybe they think it's a joke and there's no need to do much about it. Talking about peer-on-peer -peer violence is important because it could help children and young people understand what is right and wrong behaviour. Be more aware of when they are actually experiencing violence. Know when they should report what is happening and help those children and young people who initiate the violence to understand the harm they are causing. They may think because the person they are targeting reacts by laughing or smiling that they're okay, whilst in fact they are hurting very badly inside. A group of children and young people in Spain wanted to explain how talking about violence can help them. So they illustrated this by writing a short story about a young boy called Roberto. Roberto is a shy and insecure 13-year-old. But because he loves being active, he goes to the park every day after school. One day, whilst at the park, he saw four other children in the play area. He decided to say hello. He hoped they could be friends and have some fun together. Roberto was on the swing when he saw the children come up to him and he started to smile. But then one of the children told him, Hey, get off the swing. We want to use it. Roberto suddenly felt worried. Perhaps they might hurt him. So he got off the swing and moved away. He got on the little merry-go-round instead. However, the children followed him there as well. They started to spin it with a lot of force, round and round and round. Roberto had to hold on very tight to stop himself falling off. He said to them, please stop, I'm getting very dizzy. But they just laughed and said, hold on, scared little chicken, and started to make sounds. Cluck, cluck, cluck. After this, Roberto decided he'd better go home. One of the children called after him and said, Hey, come back tomorrow. We had a great time together. Roberto felt confused. He wasn't sure if they actually wanted to play or if they were being horrible to him. He really wanted to have friends and perhaps this is the way that friendships worked. Roberto did go back to the park several times over the next few days, always hoping that things might change that the children might finally accept him as part of their group, that they would be nicer to him. But that didn't happen, and this made him sad. But then he thought to himself, well, at least they did play with me in a way, and now I'm not alone. At the end of the week, the school had a workshop that Roberto attended. It was about children's rights and different forms of violence that children and young people might experience. During the workshop, the teacher talked about things like being bullied, physically hurt and attacked over the internet. After the workshop, Roberto thought about what he had felt in the park. He realised that what he had experienced was peer-on-peer -peer violence. He hadn't been sure if it had just been part of a game, even though it had made him feel upset and frightened at times. Suddenly, he felt ashamed he had let this happen to him. After the workshop, Roberto realised how important it was to learn about and know about peer-on-peer -peer violence and to understand what it is. He also realised he should go and speak to his teacher about what had happened and ask for help. So what this story illustrates is just how important it is that adults speak to children about violence and help them understand what is and what is not acceptable behaviour and that they should be able to turn to an adult for help whenever they need it.